Okay, uh, this mess right here is the innards of an FSP Hexa 85 plus 350 watts a PC power supply that uh, I want to modify to run this fan in a server application. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to consider the fact that uh, this is a gentle typhoon fan which uh, runs at a naturally lower speed than the original Yatlune sleeve bearing fan. Uh, it's just a, a much uh, weaker fan by design. And uh, because of that, the lowest fan speed of this fan is too low for my server application. In a normal desktop PC app, uh, this would work fine because this fan cools uh, the power supply perfectly adequately uh, by the default control. But in my server, uh, due to the way the case is designed, uh, the pressure inside is so low that the lowest speed this fan can currently perform is so low that we end up with air basically flowing in through the back of the power supply and into the case and uh, that at a very low rate and we don't want that. So I've currently got this power supply hooked up to my lab power supply and if we turn on the lab power supply we can turn the power supply on and we can probe the voltage of the fan. So let's see what we have. So at room temperature we have about 4.4 volts going to the fan. And uh, again, that's ab absolutely adequate for normal desktop PC use. This is a fair amount of flow. However, I want that up to maybe 6 volts or so, uh, 6, 7 volts, something in that order. Uh, so that will have a higher default speed of a fan, allowing it to actually push air through despite the weird thermals of a case. So the way we're going to be going about that is hopefully very simple. We're not going to do any high-tech uh, modification of the fan control circuit which seems to be housed on this DC to DC converter board. Instead, I think we're just going to put a resistor in parallel with the uh, fan control NTC which is underneath this wash cover right here. So it's a 4.7K-ish NTC. Uh, I did a quick calculation. If we put a 22K resistor across that, it's going to go down to about 4K. I'm not sure what the fan curve of the actual controller is, but uh, I would wager yeah, that's uh, something in the ballpark of what we want. Uh, so that means that uh, we're going to have basically a, l a lower limit to uh, how slow the fan can turn because the NTC can't uh, increase the resistance beyond a certain point and that's going to make the fan control think the power supply is running hotter and the fan turn faster. So let's uh, heat up a soldering iron and get a resistor soldered right across there. All right, so there's our newly installed resistor right across the NTC. So if we measure the resistance across there, hopefully we should see about 3.8K or so. 3.9K. And it's going up since the NTC is cooling down after being soldered onto. So let's uh, see how the power supply responds to this. If we need to tweak our resistance, in order to achieve our target of yeah, six, seven volts at room temperature. Okay, it's hooked up. We don't actually need the fan for this uh, first test uh, since uh, the voltage doesn't drop all that much. So let's turn it on and see what happens. And now we still have just uh, five volts across there. So I do think we need to further tweak the resistor in order to get a bit more grunt. Well, actually, why use a resistor where well, you can use a potentiometer? So I have connected this old used uh, audio potentiometer up so that uh, two of the pins are connected in parallel and the final one creates a resistive divider. So turning this pot allows us to set the fan speed from the default setting, if we turn it all the way uh, to that direction, to the left, yes, to the left. So if we just have it set to that right now, we can probe the fan 
and you can see we have 4.3 volts, which is the default uh, value, uh, the fan defaults at room temp. So this is pretty much stock fan control, but very nice and quiet. Uh, this is a 50k pot, so we have a 50k resistor over our 4.7k uh, thermistor. So it's going to be ever so slightly more sensitive. But if we turn this up more than about halfway, and we can hear. the fan ramp up quite significantly and we can trim that down to our desired level. So I just did a bit of testing this heatsink with the thermistor is uh, a little warm still but right now we're at uh, 5 volts that's uh, a bit lower than I want to be so let's uh, trim this to 7 or so something of that nature and you can see that the voltage is dropping as the heatsink is cooling down. And if we bring out our hot air device and give it a bit of a whoosh, you can see that the fan ramps up just as it should. So we still have fan automatics. We've just modified the curve. And as the thermistor cools down again, the fan voltage is going to drop back down to uh, probably going to settle at about 6 volts once this heatsink is fully cooled down. Beautiful. Exactly what we need. And uh, since I used a big percentage thermometer, I have cut a, out a couple of these uh, hexagons in the back of the case and uh, I'm just going to install this right here. It's uh, far away from the mains despite being right next to it, so it's going to be perfectly safe. And that allows us to adjust the airflow on this thing while it's in service and allowing us to perfectly trim in the minimum fan level required to actually achieve flow through the power supply uh, in our application. This, it, it just removes all the guesswork really. So let's uh, have a look at how we've done this on the underside to keep it safe because we have mains voltage running pretty much all the way around here. So we need to be careful when rating the wiring for this thing because this is just Cat5 wiring. If we get this underneath the mains part of this board, it could potentially uh, cause a very lively situation where we get mains in this and uh, pretty much short this to ground since it's going to mention the case, uh, ground faults, uh, device trips and uh, the server goes offline, potentially jeopardizing our data and that's a bad thing. And here you can see how the wiring has been done. So all the way along this line here the split of a board with the holes and stuff, we have a main, so we want to stay really far away from this, that's the dangerous part. However, everything on this side, which happens to include the fan controller, is uh, the secondary uh, side of a transformer, meaning it's uh, safe to touch. Uh, so I have installed first one layer of Kapton tape here on this area to stop the cable from uh, potentially shorting to anything, and then I've just used another piece of Kapton tape and really, really rubbed it in place with a q-tip to make sure it doesn't go anywhere to hold the cable in place so this uh, should not be moving anywhere especially not once it's installed in the case and uh, kind of likely pushing against the bottom perhaps so that just leaves uh, this little area around the board edge here where it's going to be pretty tight to turn to get it actually to go up on the top side of the device and then we rate it uh, pretty much airborne uh, to uh, the hole in the case which is going to be roughly here so we really need to strap this down perhaps zip tie the wiring something like that to make sure we, we're nowhere near any of this main side componentry and then we'll have a fan control adjustment on the back of the case and that is the final installation so we have a wire for the potentiometer zip tied in both ends one to the grill here and one to the wiring loom there and this is reasonably tight in between so there's no risk that this is going to fall down into any of the 230 volt primary stuff even though it's crossing right across there and as you can see it's nowhere near any of the main stuff here either so this is going to be reasonably safe and very easy to access it did main a bit wonkily since uh, I don't want to drill into this, just cut out a couple of a hexagonal shape. So it's, yeah, it's 
a little bit of an angle tilting down like a sad puppy but it's not a big deal at all I don't mind so let's reinstall the fan and uh, see how this thing performs in action okay so we now have the painted pipe back in the server I've allowed it to warm up for a couple of hours so this is all operating pretty nominally and as you can see we have these little light paper flaps on both the rear case fan and the power supply and there's a decent amount of flow going through both we have a potentiometer set to the lowest fan speed which is pretty much the same as the original controller would have it and let's see what happens when we close the side panel ha. look at that we get no flow at all through the power supply because this fan taking its temperature readings from these rather warm hard drives in the front is just pulling so much air that this poor fan has no chance of keeping up so let's use a new potentiometer to remedy that so we want to tune these so they're pretty much equal we don't need huge flow through the page of light because we can turn this up so far that uh, it uh, overpowers the rear case fan as well since this can go up to full speed but just turn the knob but something like that looks pretty decent we now have flow through both the fans and as such we have more flow through the front rather than just some air getting sucked in through the power supply and barely doing anything and there's a reasonably warm breeze coming out of there from this poor thing running with uh, no essentially no cooling for a while so there you go that's uh, a modified power supply looking pretty good well not really but it's highly functional and it's going to live much longer than if we hadn't touched the fan controller so i'm gonna to have to thank you for watching and uh, make sure you enjoy yourself